In this video, I'll show you how to set up a Redis Labs account and then how to access your Redis database with the Python Redis module. So you got to go to redislabs.com and go to try free and you can put in all your information. Oops. And then go to I agree and then go to get started. When you do that, you'll get this email. It took a while for it to come in my case, but you'll get this email and you can activate your account. So you click on that to activate it. And at that point, you're actually signed in and you, you can create your subscription. So here's where, you know, we're gonna choose and we're just gonna say, well, okay, we can, we can just kind of leave all the default settings. We're just gonna go to this 30 megabyte free database and then we can give it a name. We can just say like, you know, in class test or whatever it is and say create. And then that's it. We'll, we'll have created our, our database here. We can give this a name too. We'll say in class test. And you'll see that there's this password here, Redis password. That's important. We're going to need that. And we can go to activate. And if you go to, so initially it doesn't have the endpoint here because it's, it's making it. But if you refresh it, after a while, it should actually put an endpoint there. It just takes like a, you know, maybe I don't know what it is, 30 seconds or something like that for it to set up that endpoint for you to use. And that's where you're gonna be actually actually accessing the database is at that endpoint. That's an important piece of configuration information for the Python Redis module that's gonna actually access the database. Oh, so there it is, it just popped in now. Um, so this is the, the endpoint and this part at the end here, the colon, and then this, this part here, that's the port. And then you've got this Redis password here and you need those as your credentials essentially to access the Redis database. So to do that using the Python, uh, Redis package. So if we just Python Redis module, I should call it, uh, if you go here, this is the module that we're going to want to use. So you can say like pip or pip3 install Redis to grab it, and then you can make connections to it. So I've already got it installed, so I don't have to say pip3 install Redis, but I can use it now. So I'll say import Redis, and then to make the connection, I'm gonna say r is equal to redis.redis. .redis. And this is where we actually make the connection itself. Now I'm gonna say host is equal to, and I'm gonna give my host, as an argument, port is equal to, and I'm gonna give my port as an argument, password is equal to, I'm gonna give my password as an argument, and that'll be enough to actually connect. So we can actually do that, those three things to connect. So, and I'll save this as um, redisdemo.py. If you try to save this as redis.py, by the way, just to, just to test it, you will run into trouble because you're trying to import redis, and if you call this file redis.py, it's gonna give you a circular reference error. So just don't do that just in case you're testing this. So let's grab that information, the host and, and the port and everything. So here's the host, this portion of the endpoint there, up to the colon. And we'll put that there as our host. And here's our port, the end part after the colon. So we put that in as the port. I'll just make it bigger so you can see it. So like, this is the host here. That's the port there. And then the password is the password. So grab this password put it in there, save that. And then this will actually create the connection to the database and it'll return this object here that R is gonna reference and then we can use R to actually run commands. So this will actually, you know, make the connection there. And if we just say like print R, we'll, we'll get something that says, you know, this is an object. So I'll try to run this now. And I will say Python three, redisdemo.py and this is basically telling us that the connection is okay because that's that's basically an object that is representing our connection there and now if we actually want to use this in a way that's going to be kind of easier to use we're going to want to set a property decode responses equal true and we're going to want to set that just so that way when we do the the gets to get back the data the string is in a format that is going to be friendly for Python to use. If we don't put this decode responses equal to true, then we'll get back this 
binary string and we go to print it out in Python, it'll put a B in front of it. So basically we're gonna say decode responses equal to true, just to make sure that the strings we get back are in a Python friendly format. And from here, I can just sort of run my set and get commands to actually set and get data. So I can say like r.set and I can say, you know, some key and I can say some value. And then when I say value is equal to r.get and I say some key, it's gonna return back that value. So I can say like print the value and I should get back some value here. So if I run this here, I get back some value. And that's basically it. We just, you know, we set and we get keys. That's kind of the, you know, base way to use Redis. Um, we can set, you know, other things in strings. So I can say r.set and I can say some key two and I can say five and then I can say value two is equal to r.get some key two. And I can print value two and I'll get back five. The other thing I can do is I can get and set hashes and hashes are basically where instead of just a key that points to a value that's a, that's sort of a base value like a string or, or an integer, the key is actually going to point to another set of keys and values. So it's kind of like a hierarchy where this key points to another set of keys and values. And in the case of a hash, we call the the keys and values, fields and values, just to distinguish key from field, just to make it clear. So what I can say here is r.hset, and then I can set some hash field. So I can say hset. So I can say like hash key, and then I can say hash field one, hash value one. And I can say r.hset, and I can say hash key, and then hash field two, and then like maybe five here or something like that. And what's happening here is that at this key, hash key, and I should probably spell it correctly, at this key here, hash key, I've actually got this hash, which is, which is itself a set of keys and values. So hash field one is going to, ref, is going to refer to hash value one. Hash field two is going to refer to the value five. And so then I, when I actually go to retrieve values, I can actually use both this key and this field to retrieve a particular value. So I can say things like, you know, uh, hash val is equal to r.hget hash key. And we'll say hash key, or we'll say hash field one. And what this will give me is, I gotta, oops, run it here. Uh, oh, I've got to actually print it to actually show it. So I gotta say hash val. What this will give me is hash value one. Oh, I must've messed it up. I put an underscore in there. My mistake. I had the wrong thing, so return none. and hash value one. So I got back the correct value. So now one thing you might want to do with your Redis database as well is that if, you, if you're setting and getting things programmatically like this in your Python code, that's great. You know, you're, you're setting and getting values. The only thing is sometimes you might want to have sort of a, a view of your database and the data that's in it. So that way you can just like look at it and, and actually know what's in there. Because if you have a bug in your program and it's setting values incorrectly, or maybe it's retrieving values incorrectly, if you don't know for sure, for sure what values are actually in the database, then it's kind of hard to know what's really going on. And so typically with any kind of database, you see these administration tools. So if we go to redislabs.com slash redis insight, so redislabs.com slash redis insight, you can download a tool that'll let you manage your Redis database. And I've got to put in my right email here. Let's say download. 
I'll have to install this. And it'll be different for Windows and that, but it's more or less the, the same idea. So I should probably drag this into my applications folder. Maybe I can just run it. Nope, oh, I've got a, because I'm on a Mac, I have to like go to security and say that I'm okay with this. Open anyway. Okay, there it is. And what you do with these is you basically just put in your, your credentials to the database. And then what it'll let you do is actually look at your whole database. So we'll say add a database here and logical name, we'll say like in class test. And then I'm gonna give my host port username, that kind of stuff. So host was this, port was this, password was this. And then it adds it in. If I click on this, what it should let me do is browse it. And you can kind of, I don't know, I've, I've just downloaded this now, but uh, you can see here, if I go to browser, browser, or browse, browser, you can see here's the stuff I set. So I set some key, some key to, and hash key. It shows me like what keys I have in my database. And if I click on this, it'll show me the values there. So some key two is five, some key is some value, and hash key is these values here. And I could edit them and delete them and stuff like that. So I could like edit them and whatnot. And this is actually changing in my database. So this just gives you a nice clear objective way to see what's in your database. All right, so that's the basics of uh, using a Redis database with uh, Redis Labs and Python. Thanks.